Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, when talking about the law, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. All right, so with salvation of the gospel and compared to the law, one is bondage. One is free. Now Jesus said, I believe in the Gospel of Matthew, take of his yoke. Cast your cares upon him. You can't have both. There's no way, you got a guy in a police car who's handcuffed in the back seat. There's no way he can tell people, I'm free. <laughs> You're behind a locked door, a window you can't control. You're handcuffed. You're not free. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, uh-oh. Look what they're bringing back in the church. Isn't it amazing how much that shows up? Now let me tell you something. Circumcised shows up 10 times in the Bible. Circumcised, 39 times. Circumcision, 36 times circumcising two times there are 74 verses in the bible about circumcision now get this what which of the old testament new testament what would you think would have the most dealing with circumcision the old testament has 29 verses the new testament has 45 the most is in romans 12 verses Corinthians, two verses. Galatians, 12 verses. Ephesians, one. Philippians, two. Colossians, three. Paul talks more about circumcision than the Old Testament. And we saw in the book of Acts where it was mentioned eight verses. Let me get back a bit. Eight verses. They were trying to get the Gentiles circumcised because... That's what the Jews were required Bef before the law. Abraham, the covenant of Abraham was to be circumcised. Ishmael was circumcised. Abraham was sac uh, circumcised 90 years, if not, yeah, 90 years old. But we're not under that bondage. We're not under that law. Circumcision and the law has nothing to do with being saved. Now, I will tell you, I have a son. He was circumcised, not because of salvation, because we, we talk with the doctors. We discuss it's a healthy, clean performance to be done. It's right. But it does not need to be done. So what they're doing is the Galatian church, they're running back to the law, and they're running back to this, this circumcision, this operation. And when you go run back to the Old Testament, you're talking about Jews. Now, Paul had Timothy circumcised only because they knew he was half Greek, half Jewish, and they would be witnessing the Jews. The testimony, that's it. We read something about Titus and that he didn't have it done. It looks like he refused. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor 
to do the whole law. James 2.10. All right. Circumcision? You better honor that mother and father. You better not steal. You better not commit adultery. You better be God first. You better keep the Sabbath day. I don't mean any work on, on the Sabbath day. You better do this. You better do that. The temple's still there in Jerusalem. You better go three times a year. That's the law. And you cannot, what, what we know as Christians studying the Bible is, you cannot keep the whole law. And Paul says, hey, you want to rely on circumcision? You got to do the whole law, which we know is impossible. So what he's saying in this verse right here, it's an impossibility. Only Jesus Christ could keep the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from Great. You got that? So why are there churches out there promoting the law and works when Paul has, what, you are falling from grace? Does that sound good? You get a phone call from Grandma. Hi, Grandma. How you doing? Oh, I got some great news for you. What, Grandma? I fell. Right? Is that good news? No. That's terrible news. Even if she was not injured, it's a, you okay? <laughs> and they have fallen from what? Grace. There is no grace in law. There's no law with grace. And it has no effect. Imagine doing something. Now let's run back to what Jesus said again, the most terrifying words of the Bible. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we do this? Weren't we with you? Didn't I rely on it? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Look what Jesus is telling him, everything you've done was no effect. You know, you, you go to the store, you buy a cake mix in a box. And the frosting in the two. And you just leave it on the counter. You don't do nothing with it. There's no effect. You ain't going to get a cake. That's what the law is. You ain't going to get nothing out of it for salvation. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That's our main salvation point. By faith, not by the law, we hope for the righteousness of Christ. Christ's return. That's faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision. So, you got it? Circumcision cannot save you. Uncircumcision cannot save you. Why are we so much on this piece of flesh? That means nothing. The human man, he's, I guess, a, I guess a wife would say about her husband, if, if he's not hungry, he's in the mood for sex. If he's not in the mood for sex, he's hungry or he's sleeping. And here we go into a piece of flesh. You would think, there's more talk about a piece of flesh. I'm trying to be nice. There's more talk about this circumcision, this operation, than there is the birth of Jesus. Do you realize that? You see how serious the birth of Jesus. I don't want to say it's nothing. I'm going to be, I'm going to be careful here. But there are people who are believing more about an operation that will save you and is being rebuked. It's being called no way. That's more important than the birth of Jesus. The virgin birth of Jesus is what saves us. But this is a firm warning that this ain't going to save you. You think circumcision is a way of salvation? I, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, I'm not trying to downplay the birth of Jesus. Ye did run well. You guys were right on track. You Man, good. Who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. Somebody came in to you guys and has brought the law, has brought circumcision. Who is it? Who has turned you away from the true salvation? This procession cometh not of him that calleth you. Who calleth you? 
Jesus, God. This is not God approved. This is religion. Jesus Christ is God approved. Religion is man made. This thing is man man operation. Yes, at one time it was required. But you might as well, okay, if, you, if you're going to go by that, you might as well start knocking on doors and say, hey, start building an ark. You say, well, that, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but isn't that in the Bible? Can God tell one man to build an ark? Go start knocking on doors and say, forbid to eat fruit. Well, that is stupid. But isn't that in the Bible? And the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Rightly divine the law is not church aid. Now, when you get in the tribulation period and the church is gone, the law is back. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I believe this is Bob Jones Sr. said. Everything that Satan does is good twisted. Now, I'm not a gambling man. I don't mean to say bet because it's a bad word. But I'm willing to bet as Satan uses the law today for people to be saved. I guarantee probably in the tribulation period he's going to probably use no, no law, just faith. He's going to get them mixed up. Like he's got them mixed up in the Galatian church now. They're believing in something that's not their time. Well, the tribulation period, what could Satan use to believe in that's not their time and be damned? Oh, they're saying law. No, you don't need that. Just by faith. A little leaven leavened the whole lump. Oh, look at that expression. Wasn't that what Jesus said called the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes? Wasn't that woman who put that little bit of leaven in there and the whole thing? You guys are messing with something very little here. And we know they're involved in the law. Looks like a little circumcision is going to go far away. Because if the Bible says circumcision, then oh, look what else it says. Oh, look what else we got to do in the Old Testament. Until the whole lump is corrupted. Paul's trying to stop this. He's trying to cut it out, if you get what I'm trying to say. But they got the wrong cutting out. <laughs> I hope you see how clean I'm trying to be. You're trying to cut off something that you don't need to cut off, but you need to cut off that sin. I have confidence in you through the Lord. I, I knew you guys. I, 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 I trust you that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you should bear his judgment. Whosoever he be, Paul doesn't know who he is. But that guy who, who got you in the condition he's in now, you're in, you're going to judge. You read Jude about the judgment? You're going to get it. Peter speaks about it. And I, brethren, say people, if I preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? The Jews would not be upset. The unsaved Jews would not be upset if Paul preached the law. That's, that's what we do. That Pharisee that, that came, I'm not an adulterer. I'm, I give my tithe, blah, blah, blah. Works. That, that uh, uh, cent, oh, was it centurion or publican. Lord God, just be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. See, the Pharisees and the Jews, they, they had to show God something. A Christian, Lord, I, 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 it's nothing I can do. I, I just got the blood. Even that, I had nothing to do. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The law, look at this. The law stops the work of Calvary. You see how dangerous it is? I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you. I, cut, cut, cut off, you recognize that word cut off? That's in the Old Testament. I wish they were in hell. You want to be in the Old Testament, men? All right, I'll give you an Old Testament word. I wish they were in hell. I wish they were cut off. Do you get the pung in cheek here too? 
What have we been talking about? We've been talking about circumcision, Paul. I wish you were cut off. Wish you guys were that piece of flesh. How's that? How's that for sarcasm? Trying to be clean, but trying to read the Bible to you. I don't think Paul, I think Paul used that word correctly. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. You only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. Listen, what you're doing is for the flesh. Look at what I'm doing. Look what I can do. Look at me. Look how well. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You want to do the law? Love your neighbor. There you go. And then with a the commandment, love the brethren. But... If ye bite and devour one another, who that's a, that's cruel. Where did Paul get that from? You want to take a guess where Paul got? If you bite and devour one another, can you can you think? Huh? Well, that too. What did they do to Stephen at the preaching of the cross? They gnawed on him, and guess who was there holding the coats? Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Again, that's like what Tracy said. That's the devil. But why are you guys acting like the devil? Seeking who he may devour. Well, devour and consume is the same thing. You guys are acting just like Satan. Knock it off. And then you proclaim the law. Okay. What are you doing to your neighbor if you're biting and devouring evil? You've broken the law. You're against the law. You're not doing good. And don't go run to the cross because that's offense by the law you're doing. Your testimony, you can't come to the blood of Jesus Christ. You got the law. You're in trouble. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now the flesh is still there. You say, well, okay, I sin. I'm a sinner. Why do I sin? Because I don't walk in the spirit. I stepped out of the spirit. I thought of self. Do you realize when we sin, we break that first commandment? It's not God first. And you ever have that moment where you're, you you want to sin, you're going to sin or something like that, and then you think, oh, God, you won't like it. The Holy Spirit's working with me. And that's you thinking of God, preventing you from sinning. And that moment when you do sin, you have no reality of God at all. You're not even thinking about it. You broke the first commandment. If we were to think about God all the time, we would not sin unless we were stupid or unless we didn't care. For the flesh, here's a good word, for lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. There is a battle going on in you right now. You've got this flesh and you've got the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you, Christian, and they hate each other. Absolute hatred. The flesh wants to do whatever it wants to do, and the Holy Spirit wants to be approved of God. The Holy Spirit hates what the flesh wants, and the flesh hates what the Holy Spirit wants. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that are that are, so that ye would. I want to do right. Oh, but this flesh. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So when I go into the into the flesh and do that which is fleshly, not the Spirit, all right, I'm condemned. The wages of sin is death. When I come back to the Spirit, I can plead the blood. I can run to Calvary's cross. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. 1 Corinthians 10. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Well, just in case I didn't name any. I forgot some. Just in case I didn't name your sin. 
And listen, there is no particular order here. All is sin. All have sin. And all sin is when you are in the flesh. When you sin, you tell the Holy Spirit, sorry, I, I, I went the fleshy way. The flesh won. When you perform sin. Of that, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not eternal soul that's lost. Sin will cause you to lose inheritance of the kingdom of God. You've got to put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you bear the judgment seat of Christ, it will be wood, hay, or stubble, and it burns up. God will not ever. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Sins and in the flesh may prevent you, will prevent you from getting the inheritance in the kingdom. You got to get that. Because there's many Christians who don't care. They're saved. They're in the flesh. Where do they go when the millennium happens? They're, I have no idea. Because if they're still in their sins, they don't get the kingdom. But, but the fruit of the Spirit. Notice fruit is singular. So it's not trees. It's one tree producing one fruit. The Holy Spirit is a tree. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All right? Many people want love. Well, you got to have meekness and temperance. No, I just want love. Oh, I got to have joy. You got to have long suffering. You got to have faith. How's that? Oh, faith. I, faith. You got to have long suffering. You got to have gentleness. You got to have meekness. You can't just say, oh, this list of the fruit of the Spirit. I'm, I just want that one. You got to have all nine of them. And speaking to the Galatian church, okay, such, against such, there is no law, all right? If you guys are in the law, you're not the fruit of the Spirit. You are of the flesh. And stay in the law, you're not going to get no inheritance of the kingdom. You want the Holy Spirit to work in with you, you got to get out of that flesh. You want the Holy Spirit's fruit, you got to get out of the law. Because it's not what you do, it's not what you can do, it's not what heaven's about. It's about the merit of Jesus Christ. Uh, what is it? Uh, not of works, at least any man boasts. The law will make you boast. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. You died. Daily. It's self-denial of the world and the flesh. Crucified. Death. And you know where people take that the wrong way? They'll actually nail themselves physically to a tree. And that's not physical. That's spiritual. Again, it's not by works. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So, self-evident. Let's walk by the Holy Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, law, because the Spirit's in 25, provoking one another. Huh. <laughs> I kept more commandments today than you kept. Look at me. Look what I did. Envy. Evan. Envy. Envy. Okay, get it worse. Envying one another. Wow. I can't believe they. he's done all that. 
Who do you think he is? Mr. Boastful over there. Wish I was like him. If God knew about him, what I know about him. Oh, see? The law provokes. The Holy Spirit promotes. So the aspect is five chapters so far. The law is not for us. For salvation. Never. 